So in this lecture, we are going to discuss about uh, the number of elements in the cosets, and we are going to prove one very important result that if you pick up any two cosets, A star H and say B star H, the cosets are obviously disjoint from each other. But what we want to prove is that the number of elements in the first coset A star H is the same as number of elements in the second coset B star H. So let me write it as an exercise. Let G be a group and H be a subgroup of G. Then we have to show that any two cosets A star H, suppose I take the first coset is A star H and B star H have same number of number of elements okay and once i prove this exercise then i will declare that any two cosets have same number of elements okay. so what we will do we will now find a function between the two sets so let me draw a picture simple picture so this is coset a star h which is having elements a star h1 a star H2 and so on. Suppose I have K number of elements, A star HK. And this is the second coset, which is B star H. Now this is B star, this is B star H1 and dot, 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 B star H. I don't know what is this, so I will write B star HM. I don't know right now that they have same number of elements okay so from this set to this set i want to find a function f and this function f should be what this function f should be a one one and on two function once i prove that this function is one one on two then i can say that this is not hm but this has to be equal to how much this has to be equal to hk then i will write the k over there okay so right now i don't know so i cannot say that it is hk okay so what is that function which i will map the elements of this set to the elements of that set now the left hand side coset the a star h coset that i have in that coset every element is of the form what every element is of the form a star h okay this h can be any one of h1 h2 ak and any element on the right hand side set in the codomain set has of the form what b star h this h can be different note that this h and this h may be different because any element of the left hand side coset may be a star h i and any element on the right hand side coset can be what b star h j not necessary the first co the first element need to map the first element or the first element can map to any other element it may happen like this also right so it is not that a star h i must map to what a star h i that is not in our hands right so what bijection are we going to create over here so what we will do is we will uh, we will take a function f such that f is from what f is from a star h to b star h and how am i going to define now that function so i will take any element which is of the form a star h over here okay and i will map it to the same element but just the h i am going to keep the same but i'm just going to instead of a i'm going to replace a by what b so what is this bijection or what is this function rather doing it is mapping a star h1 to exactly what it is mapping to b star h so this is the the bijection that i'm going to define a star h2 will exactly will be mapped to b star h2 this is the way i'm going to define the function so what is f f of a star h1 a star f of a star h is equal to how much f of b star b star h okay so this is our this is our function now i have to prove that this function is what this function is one one let us see how this function is a one one function so what is the definition of a one one function so let f of a star h let me say f of a star h1 is equal to f of a star h2 these are two elements a star h1 a star h2 and f of them are equal so how i how can i prove that 
um, if I want to prove one one, you know that if f of x one is equal to what? If f of x if f of x one is equal to f of x two, then I must be able to prove that x one is equal to x two. Right. This is the definition. Means actually, I have to prove in the last step that a star h one is equal to a star h two. This is the meaning that the function will become a one one function. So how will I reach this particular conclusion? So let us write the next step now. So what is f a f of a star h one? F of a star h one is nothing but b star h one. And what is equal to what is f of what is a f of a star h two? It is b star h two. Correct. And then I will cancel the b using the left cancellation law. And using the left cancellation law, what am I going to get? I'm going to get that h one. Is equal to how much h2, and if h1 and h2 are same, and if I calculate a star h1, and if I calculate a star h2, then they will also be same because h1 and h2 are same. Why a star h1 is equal to a star h2? It is very clear because a star h1 is nothing but a star. What is h1? h1 is nothing but h2. So clearly, a star h1 will again equal to what? a star h2. So from the next step, I will write once h1 is equal to h2. This implies that a star h1 is equal to a star h2, and therefore we had started from f of a star h1 equal to f of a star h2, and we have proved that a star h1 is equal to a star h2. This means that the given function f is a is a one-one function. Okay. Now let us try to prove that the function f is On to y is the given function on to. So to prove that the function is on to, I will pick up any element from the codomain. What is the codomain? The codomain is b star h, okay. And that element is a beta. Suppose that element is beta. For that beta, I must find the element in the domain, which is say alpha, which is in a star h, such that the beta pre images. What the pre-image of beta is alpha, such that f of alpha should exactly come up to be how much f of alpha should be equal to beta. So let us pick up beta in the right hand side or in the codomain. So let beta belong to the codomain. So beta is a element in the codomain is b star h. Okay. Once beta is an element in b star h, now we know that b star h has elements of the form what. What is the element form of b star h? All the elements in b star h look like b star h one, b star h two, and something like this, like this. So this beta is also equal to b star some h i, correct? So beta is also b star h i. Since beta belongs to b star h, this means beta is equal to b star some h i th element, where h i is some element in what? h i is some element in h. Okay. So this beta. Is nothing but b star h i. Now, can we guess what is the pre-image of b star h i? According to the function, what the function does? The function does is if the function takes a star h i to b star h i, right? So, who must be the pre-image of b star h i? Obviously, the pre-image of b star h i must be alpha, which is given by what? A star h i. So, the pre-image because we know what is the function. The pre-image, by the definition of our function f, we can say that the pre-image is alpha equal to a star h i. So this becomes the pre-image. And what is f of alpha equal to? F of alpha is equal to f of a star h i. See this verification is left. Okay, is equal to a star h i. But what is f of a star h i? It is b star h i. And b star h i is nothing but beta. So we have proved that f of alpha is equal to beta. So given beta in the codomain, we have found out an alpha in the domain such that f of alpha is equal to beta. And therefore, this function that we have, this function is a onto function. And therefore, the function f from a star h to the set b star h is a Bijective function, and therefore now you can say that the number of elements in a star h is equal to number of elements in the coset b star 
H. So we have taken any two cosets and we have proved that the number of any L elements is same. Therefore, all cosets have same number of elements. All cosets have same number of elements. The very important particular case of this thing is that therefore all so if or if H has M elements, okay, suppose H is a subgroup, right? H is already a subgroup. And if this subgroup has M number of elements, then we can say that all cosets have why H is also a, a coset means H is given by what? H is also a coset, right? E star H, right? So this is H. So H is also a coset. First coset is H itself, right? So this means all the cosets have same number of elements as that of number of elements in H. So if H has M number of elements, all cosets will have M number of elements. This means all cosets have M elements. Okay, so any two cosets will have the same number of elements, okay.